bad when you can't see for the sun. So I sure can't see. There we are, about right there. All right, I went and got this out of the shed for her. This is a Choice brand salad spinner. And uh, this is actually the uh, five gallon model. But uh, it's got the basket comes in and out. Really nice, uh, all plastic gears and stainless. Really wor works really, really well. Uh, that's what she's gonna use today. She's gonna pick some greens and uh, uh, cook us up a pot of greens. So uh, yeah, if you don't have one, this is the way to go, I'm gonna tell you. It will uh, it'll spin them down after you wash them and uh, they come out really nice. I'm gonna tell y'all what, these are, these are some pretty greens. They really are. Now what I like to do is I take the basket after I rinse them twice in the basket. Then I dump my greens over into the drain tub. Now on this drain tub, I'm gonna have to stand up. It's got a spout. See at the end where the water's coming out? That's a whole lot easier. Now I do have a salad spinner inside, but it's, you know, just a household. But I want to show with y'all, what I'm going to do is, this is when I'm taking my stems off. All I'm going to do is fold the leaves together, okay, like a taco. Then I'm going to come in and this rib comes right out, okay? Then that's what you're left with. See, it's a solid green. All I did was take, take the rib out. And I'm going to do this on every one of them. So it's not so much work when I get into the house, then I can just start folding and cutting. And I cut mine julienne, in other words, like a cigar, is how I do my collards. Uh, I don't like to chop them into squares. I just think that they, I don't know, I think that's just a preference. Um, but these are, these are really tender. There's nothing like a pot of greens cooking, especially when it's crisp and cool outside. And this is also therapy for me. I could sit and do this all day long. Because I know when I fix that bow and have some cornbread on the side, oh, it was all worth it. So I'm going to get to destemming these and uh, check for any bad marks, which is what I'm doing. Now, all of this will go into the compost pile. Nothing's going to go to waste here. But I'll get this done. And then I'll spin it out, show you how the spinner works, and then we'll move on in and uh, start the cooking. I think we're on our last rinse. Let's see. Oh, they look pretty, y'all. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you have a large gardens, or if you're, you know, farmer's market doing lettuce sales and bundles, 
tell you what, a large commercial spinner like this, it's well worth the investment. Oh, hold on, y'all. I just found me some muscle. I'm fixing to put somebody to work. It's a whole lot easier when he starts, starts spinning it, but it's tough on my hands. Hey, y'all, I got to put in the middle of this. All right. Let me get this rinsed out and poured, and then you can spin it for me. See, it's got this cool spout. I don't know if they can see it. Show them the spout. Point Drain out. spout. Right there. You can put a plug in it. Yep. There you go. Cold water, or you can let it drain while you spin it. y'all see that? Spin, baby, it's like spin. like a washing machine, y'all. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're perfect. Now, we could have spun it out even more, but these are fixing to go in some broth anyway. But I'm going to tell you what. I did do four rinses. Um, I always call that a lanya, a little something extra. You know, three rinses is good. Why not four for a lanya? So, I'm going to get these on in the house. And then we're going to move to the stove. We're back in the house. I've got the green sitting over in the sink. But the first thing we've got to do is, and this is something that I normally start in the morning. Uh, but for video's sake, I felt like y'all needed to see each step. Now, I could have recorded this early this morning. Um, but I didn't think about greens till, you know... I call that late morning, 7, 7.30 is a late morning. But all I've got here is some chicken stock. Now, you do not have to use chicken stock. You can use water. If you have chicken stock, I suggest using it. Now, I thought I was going to get more greens, so I pulled out two ham hocks, but that's okay. That's just more flavor because the liquor off of this can make a better liquor if I'm trying to maybe saute some greens, some spinach, and things like that. But I'll do a recipe on that. But here's the ham hocks, y'all. That's, that's a big one. And here's one. That's nothing but flavor. And what you want is you want that water to cover it, those ham hocks, which they are by about, and if I'm measuring, the water is the first line of the finger above the meat. So an inch. That's all you need. Because what you're going to do is you're going to bring this up to a bowl. Once it comes to a bowl, you're going to turn it down to simmer. You're going to put the lid on it at the simmering stage. And you're going to cook it for two hours. Yeah, I said two hours. But there's a reason to this. The flavor of what this stock is going to make is going to up that flavor of them greens. Now, some do 30 minutes. If you have the time, let this cook two hours, even three. As large as these smoked ham hocks are, I could even go three. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm going to do. Bring it to a boil. Turn, now, I'm not, so no salt, no pepper, nothing like that. No seasoning goes in at the start. Um, just your ham hocks, your stock, or your water. And that's it. Now we're going to get to cutting the greens. And then I'm just going to set them in the refrigerator. Because like I said, I normally start this. So when I go harvest the greens, it's about the time that I'm going to put them, you know, into the ham hock liquor to start with. So we're going to do it a little bit backwards, but this way you can see each step. So we're going to get to cutting some greens. Okay, y'all. There's my mess of greens. Pretty good stack. Now we're going to get to cutting them. I know part of my head's cut off, but I want you to see how I can actually cut them. I'm going to take a handful of these leaves, and all I'm doing, of course, I'm doing the collards first because they're larger. I'm just going to stack them. Now, if they're cut in two, that's no big deal. You're still, all you're doing is stacking. That's it. Just stacking. And if you get mustard green, that's fine. 
There we go. See the stack I've got? Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to roll it like a cigar. And this is called a julienne cut. All right. Now here's my knife. Now I'm going to go in. I'm going to turn it around, but I'm going to go in sideways, okay? And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going about, I'd say, not quite a half inch is all I'm doing. And this is how I like my greens. Okay? That's how I prefer them. Now, you can chop them. It really doesn't matter. It's your preference. Um, but this is how I found that they... Uh, now, see, here's a long one that didn't cut. I'm just going to rip it in two. It's not... A, I mean, it's not science, y'all. It's whatever's comfortable. Um, but when I'm working with a lot of greens, and I have worked with, you know, at the holidays... This is nothing. This The pile I showed you, it's usually four of those piles uh, because we have everybody request greens at Thanksgiving. So all I'm going to do, I'll do one more. And like I said, I'm going to get these just cut and in the refrigerator. That's all I'm going to do. And let the ham hocks cook two hours. And then I'm going to bring you to that next step. Because that's where the flavor's going in, y'all. And I'm talking about, and it's ingredients that all of y'all got, I promise you. It's the best thing you ever ate. Like I said, if you put that little handful, like I showed you at the beginning of the video, with some little tender greens, it gives it that bite, but it's that good bite. Like I said, I prefer all collards. My husband prefers a mixture. So, we compromise. So, I'm going to get these cut up. We'll come back when the ham hocks are ready. It's been two hours. Now they're hot. I'm going to let them just cool. But as you can see, these ham, ham hocks, they actually cooked till they pulled, till the bone pulled away. Now this is the bone that you're looking at right here. Okay? So when you see that meat pull away from that bone, them ham hocks are done. Now, all we've got is what we call the pot liquor. But it's not quite pot liquor. Till it renders the juice from these grains. But we're gonna start, we're gonna start with the pot liquor, which was nothing but the chicken broth that we had cooked the ham hocks in. Now to this, I've moved it up from a low to a medium. Okay? It's just got a good slow boil going to it. Now this is where I'm gonna do mine different. I'm gonna come in and this is about a half of a medium yellow sweet onion. If you were looking as a measuring cup, a half a cup, okay? About a half a cup. Now, to this, this is where we're going to come in with our seasoning. I'm going to salt it pretty well, okay? I'm guesstimating about a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons. We're going to come in with some black pepper. Now, the seasoning is strictly your taste, okay? I'm just sharing what I do. You can try it and you can tweak it, okay? We're gonna come in with some garlic powder. I'm not using just whole garlic. I'm just gonna use the garlic powder. And then some red pepper flakes. Now, I want mine a little bit on the heat. I would say a half a teaspoon, a fourth to a half, okay? Now, that's all we've done to this so far. Now, we're gonna add a little bit of sugar. Not much, just a little bit of sugar. And I'll measure it for you. I would say a fourth of a cup. About a fourth of a cup. Now, I'm going to let this come to a boil, but now we're not going to add this till the last. But this is nutmeg, and you'll see how much I add. This nutmeg, anytime you're cooking a green, whether that be spinach, collard greens, kale, um, any roughage like that, except for cabbage. Now, it doesn't work well with cabbage, but a dark green. Um, it gives it a taste. It, it takes a bite out of any green, okay? But it gives it a taste that's not detected as nutmeg because you're not putting a lot into it. 
I just have always gone to nutmeg when I am cooking a green, you know. Uh, there's something that marries with those greens that I really can't describe. All I can suggest is to try it. Um, if you're not a fan of nutmeg, I promise you, you will not taste the nutmeg in here. It blends so well with some of the bitterness of greens. All greens have a bitterness. Um, and so you tweak it with sugar. You tweak it with seasonings. But there's something about that nutmeg that brings it together. Now, at the very end is going to be my secret ingredient. That takes it over the top. So, all I've done is bring this to a rolling boil. And now I'm going to come in with my greens. Now, it's going to look like you have a lot of greens going in, okay? But I tell you, they cook down so fast. Actually, I may have more juice than what I really need for the greens. But like I said, that's okay. Because I can take that juice and I can cook some beans with that juice. Oh, yeah and maybe add some kale to it, like a white bean, using this juice, and then add some kale, and just make a whole nother meal out of this. Um, so that's all I've done, is add the greens. They will cook down. And I'm gonna let these cook like this a good 30 minutes, okay? Once it kinda comes back up, I'm gonna turn it down on low, for 30 minutes only. And that gives me enough time for the ham hocks to cool off to where I can remove all the meat from the bone and break it up and put it in here. So 30 minutes on a simmer with a lid on once it comes up to its little boil, turn it down. Then take your meat off and a little bit of fat of your smoked ham hocks, add it to these greens and you're gonna let them cook one more hour. Like I said, we're looking at a total of a three hour process but it's gonna be so worth it. So I'm, that's all I'm gonna do, and then I'll come back with that last step that I wanted to share with y'all. Y'all, these greens are smelling good. Like I said, I did add the ham hocks, and at the end of the video, I'll recap, and we've allowed it to simmer 30 minutes. They're very tender. Um, probably gonna have to get a spoon instead of these tongs. But this is where I change mine up. I know pretty much what I've done is traditional. Like I said, maybe except for the nutmeg. And you're gonna see I'm using whole nutmeg. And it's hard to measure. So I'm not gonna talk and I'm gonna let y'all hear how many slides or scrapes that I use. Now I'm just using a small grater. You can use a, uh, a plain. You know, if you have one of these, a grater, um, I'm just using a small one. All right, here we go. I did 11 scrapes. Now, I don't know what that, I couldn't measure it if I wanted to. Um, but it's just enough to, and you saw 11 scrapes. Um, I'm going to practice on that one. I'm going to see how many measurements that is. Because I do know that it's less than even an eighth of a teaspoon. It's less than a pinch. Um, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see. I'm, gonna, I'm just curious to see if I can even come up with a measuring for that. Um, but then, pepper sauce. Now, this is a vinegar-based pepper sauce that I put up. I believe I have a video on it. If you don't have pepper sauce, you can purchase pepper sauce. Vinegar will work. Now, no apple cider, just plain white uh, vinegar, maybe a champagne vinegar, definitely not a red wine vinegar. But this is pepper sauce. I'm going in with one teaspoon. Now, that's really not nothing compared to the size pot that I have. There's something about that bite. That bite takes away the bitter bite. And it marries well with the nutmeg with your traditional seasonings. These flavors blend so well. Um, let me just get a spoon here and stir. And really guys, y'all, this, this is ready. Um, I'm just gonna kinda let it sit here on low 
put the lid on it, it's definitely not going to hurt it. And I'll bring the camera in closer so you can get a better look at these greens. They are so, so tender. And I'll tell you how tender they are. When you can get a green to stick to a spoon, that's tender. So it smells good. So I'll bring the camera up, let you see it, you know, up close. I'll put the light on. Then we're going to get plated up, and then we're going to recap the steps. I'm going to pick some of these greens up. And you see, this is that ham off of that ham hock. Look at those greens. If you could only smell it. We're going to get this plated up, and I'll sit down and visit. It's supper time, y'all. Well, sample time. There's plenty more for supper. But I was having my afternoon coffee, and... It got finished. I said, you know what? The cook must sample. This is how I eat mine before we recap on the uh, recipe. Got my bowl of greens. Phenomenal smell. Now at this point, I did add more pepper sauce. That's an option. But instead of the cornbread being on the plate, my cornbread gets set right in the greens so it can soak up all of them juices that's how you eat greens and cornbread so you saw me out in the garden I didn't have as many collards as I was hoping um, we were hit with an early frost when they were still young so it kind of set them back but they're coming back no problems actually doing great but to supplement the amount that I wanted to cook, I did go ahead and pick a few tender mustards. I'm not a fan of mustard straight, but I do like to put them in, um, and I would say a ratio of one part mustard green, three parts collards. My husband, he loves the mustard greens. So that stretched. Then I brought you up to the front of the house, and uh, Buddy showed y'all the salad spinner that we use for outdoors because it's so large I can do large amounts lettuce my greens and so forth even your um, root vegetables cleans them very well then we came into the house now I did look and see the size of the ham hocks I know I showed you in the video but I had a pound and a half of smoked um, ham hocks. I lost my brain just then. So it was a pound and a half. So I had those cooking for two and a half hours. Yes, I could have went three. But as soon as you see that bone wanting to fall off out of that ham hock, then you know it's ready. So I took those out, set them to the side. But in between, you saw how I prepared my greens. I stack them, I roll them like a cigar, cigar, and I cut them on a bias. In other words, diagonal. And I have long strips. When the ham hocks come out, we added salt, black pepper, garlic powder, black pepper to taste. Um, I estimated about a tablespoon of salt. That's what I estimated, or two teaspoons heaping, because that was a decent sized pot. And I added about a fourth of a cup of sugar. That was all the seasoning, remember, that we had put in the liquid, which we started with chicken broth. You can start with water, you know, if you want to. And as that liquid kind of came up to a rolling boil, that's when I added my greens in. Stirred them, let it come back to a boil, turned it on low, put the lid on, and I let these cook for an hour. At 30 minutes, they started getting tender, but I let them go an hour. That's when I came in with the pieces of ham hock, like I had said I would, and I just pulled all the meat off, took the bone and the fat, 
and disposed of it. And then I let that cook, just kind of merry cook. I allowed about a 15 minute window when I came in with the nutmeg I showed you guys and also the pepper sauce. Now mind you, the pepper sauce and the nutmeg is optional. But out of the two, I would suggest do not leave out the nutmeg. Now remember, I did 11 little scrapes, which is not much. You can omit the pepper sauce. But I hope if you try this recipe, try that little bit of nutmeg. You will not know it's in there. And then I just let it just simmer for 30 minutes. I actually turned the fire off, prepared my cornbread. You saw in the picture the, the small cast iron, the pong of cornbread, and you saw the pot of greens. Now you see my plate. Wow. I should have took a picture of this. Maybe the next one I'll take a picture. But for now, Oh, and it's piping hot, y'all. I was hoping I would talk long enough to get the steam off. Well, we gonna taste test. Mmm. I'm telling you, if you thought you didn't like greens, give it one more shot. Holy mo! You know what? I might just keep this pot to myself, go pick a bunch of mustard greens, cook those for my husband. They're so good, I don't know if I want to share. Y'all, this is just simple food. Easiest thing to grow. Really the easiest thing to cook. Wow. Mm. I need to get off this camera, don't I? Or y'all just gonna see, see me see see me eat this? You know what? That never hurt nobody. Now yeah, a little pat on the back. This is good, guys. So I hope you understood the recipe. Um, I kind of might have been all over the place trying to get ready for the holidays. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I've got an abundance of cooking to do, but I felt like this was. A good starter you know um, this is comfort food to me so now I'll enjoy this I'll enjoy my cup of coffee I'll think about my menu for tomorrow I look forward to Christmas seeing the grandkids hearing all about the gifts this is the holidays guys so I, I wish you all a Merry Christmas I wish you all happy holidays, and until next time, God bless.